Hey y'all, it's Joseph Lipper, and today I'm going to go over a quick walkthrough of the Vex IQ game manual and all the rules that you need to know to get started with this game. This is not a comprehensive game manual review. This is all the important rules that are going to be essential for knowing how this game works. That's what I'm going to talk about today. So, um, up first, we are going to talk about passing. Passing is so important in this game because passing is potentially 12 points, and a goal can be a maximum of 2 points. So, like... Passing is just worth a crazy amount of points, and so that's going to be the first thing we talk about because that is just so incredibly important. So if we look up uh, the definition of uh, passing in SC5, um, uh, we can actually... Uh, there we go. SC5. So basically this rule says that um, you get a pass when both robots independently touch the ball. So basically when both robots... Like, like when each robot at some point in time has touched the ball all by itself, um, then they can, uh, they get credit for a pass. And a pass is, it, it depends on how many switches you've cleared at the end of the match, that's how many points all of your goals are worth. Um, but, um, yeah, so this passing is incredibly important. This rule right here is, yeah, it's a very, very important rule to know. Um, <clears throat> uh, next up, we have SC7. SC7 talks about uh, how the this game is played in real time. This is the first game in Vex IQ we've ever had that has an infinite score, and co what comes with that is that you have to score in real time, because at the end of the match, you can't look at the field and know how many points are scored. You know, last year, you look at the field, and you're like, okay, I see all the blocks in the field, I see how many points were scored. This year, you look at the field, you just see some switches cleared and all that. Um, you don't really see, like, how many points were scored, so that's why you have to score in real time. Um, but that comes with some interesting challenges. Um, for example, uh, in Q&A 2019 here, um, we see uh, this team asked uh, about how how referees are really going to keep track of all, all of the these uh, all the balls moving all over the place because um, like at the high level of play, like they're really going to be going like passing and shooting them as fast as they possibly can um, because that. Uh, they want to score the maximum number of points, and that's going to be hard to keep up with, uh, because you got to keep track of which ball has been passed, which ball ha is scored, and all of that. And so they were asking, hey, can we decorate the balls to, you know, write A, B, C on them and, um, you know, mark them up? Uh, and they're like, hey, this might cause some issues with, like, vision tracking with the balls and stuff like that. Um, that would be, uh, I'm interested to see the answer for this question when the GDC decides to answer it. Um, it was asked a, a while ago, and um, also interesting. I haven't been able to find some of these Q and A's that I found earlier on the uh, the official Q and A. Um, some of them just aren't showing up. I'm not sure why. It's probably a problem on my end. But um, yeah, uh, moving on, we have uh, rule SG one, um, and SG one uh, talks about the size box. Um, well, let's find it real quick. There we go. Um, SG one. This is like the first game we've ever had that like has anywhere close to this size of a size box. Not only can your robot be 23 inches wide, it can be 6 feet long. That's, like, taller than a lot of people are. That's absolutely crazy. And I'm excited to see the cumin tables at Worlds that can make room for two 6-foot-long robots per match. It's, again, it's going to be really funny. But, um, besides the point, um, yeah, uh, th this size box is going to make room for some interesting designs that had never really been tried before. Um, I'm excited to see if robots are going to be normal size or if they're going to be gigantic at, at Worlds. I, I don't know. It's going to be pretty fun. Um, next up, we have rule SG4. <clears throat> SG4 is about using the loading station. This rule is also up there with the top two or three important rules that you need to know. Um, this, uh, this rule basically says that you can't cross this, uh, this line in front of the loading station basically this line right here you can't cross that line when the ball is still in the loader you have to wait till the loader is done dispensing the ball then you can go grab it out of the floor um and if you do cross the line then you know you get a violation potentially dq and all that um so you want to be very careful not to cross the line it i think the point of this rule is to prevent like puppy guarding the goal and just like having a robot that like goes over the goal or over the loader and uh <clears throat> and like waits for the ball to come out and like grabs it out of it before it can decide which way to go or something like that um it does mean you have to be a little more careful when you're doing a bunch of uh, cycles really fast to make sure you don't accidentally cross it as one's going through or grab one out as another one is coming through the loader. Um, yeah, uh, that, that's going to be pretty interesting. Just make sure you do not cross this line uh, when the ball is coming out of the loader. Um, yeah, um, next uh, we get to talk 
about uh, rule SG5. And SG5 is really interesting because this is about rapid loading. And it, rapid loading pretty much says that during the last 15 seconds of the match, you can, um, instead of putting the balls through the loader, you can put them just in one of the starting zones in the middle of the field, and then your robot can pick it up from there and score. Um, the catch to this is that you can't pass a uh, rapid loaded ball. And this makes referees' jobs even harder, because now they have to keep track of which balls were rapid loaded, which balls were not. Um, I don't really think we're going to use rapid loading in teamwork, because the passes, like I said before, are where all of the points are, and so it's going to... Um, it, it, like, I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of rapid loading, because you just get one or two points per goal. At, at that point in the match, probably just one point per goal. Um, and you could be getting 12 points per pass, and so it's just not even close to worth it to use rapid loading um, in, in teamwork matches. That said, skills is different, so uh, we're going to talk about that probably actually right now. Um, uh, if we uh, look at RSC2, um, this is a uh, interesting rule. Um, it, so now, now we're in the skills challenge. Um, uh, so basically RSC1 is just, you know, all rules that Everything we don't say is change in skills still applies from teamwork matches and stuff. Um, but one thing they do say that is different is the, the scoring in skills. The scoring is different because um, you don't pass in skills because there's only one robot. So instead of passing, you get your pass points when you score a goal instead of the goal points. So instead of one point per goal, it's um, each your goal... Each uh, goal is scored based on how many switches you've cleared at the end of the match. So if at the end of the match you have four cleared switches and you scored four goals, then that's going to be four switches is 12 points per goal times four goals is 48 points plus the four points you got for clearing those switches, the four bonus points you got. So that's 48 plus four is 52 points um, if you score four goals and clear four switches. And so that's kind of just an example of how... Uh, you could skill score a skills match. Um, next, uh, we're going to talk about uh, RSC three. This uh, the, there's just one little thing I want to note in this rule. Basically, is that you can uh, put that second preloaded ball anywhere in starting zone one, um, which is really cool because then you get to start with two balls on the field, and that lets you get out of the gate pretty fast in skills. Um, our next rule we're going to talk about is. Uh, skills and rapid loading. See, rapid loading and skills is different, because since there's no passing, there's no catch to rapid loading like there is in teamwork, where you can't get a pass. In skills, you can get a pass, well, you, you, you get your points when you score the goal, right? So, um, you can rapid load as soon as you possibly can, and that'll just increase your cycle, or sorry, decrease your cycle time, increase your points, um, <clears throat> which is really valuable because that makes it so you only have to go across half the field um, instead of the whole field. You don't have to wait for the loader and all that and, you know, think about which way it's going to go. You can just roll the ball into your robot in the starting zone. Um, and, yeah, <clears throat> so rapid loading skills is really valuable because it doesn't, it doesn't decrease your points or doesn't limit your ability to get points uh, for that cycle. Um, you can still get full points for every rapid loaded cycle and skills, um, which is really cool because that means you can score a lot, a lot of points and skills really really fast if you know the rules um yeah um lastly i want to go over a few q and a's um that have uh been asked and some of them have been answered uh as of uh june 5th when i am recording this video um so yeah so first we are going to talk about uh q a uh 2021 um this one is uh just kind of a interesting edge case well not really an edge case but it's an interesting scenario where um you can uh, use all three of your team members to wrap or to to load during autonomous skills. So that's kind of cool because in the regular rules you can only use one person because the other two people are drivers. Um, uh, we talked about this one about marking up the balls to help referees know when balls are being passed, scored, all that. Um, next, this one Q and A twenty eighteen. Um, this one is a, a cool uh, question because I've run into this one before. Um, Basically, uh, you can a ball can hit a uh, a switch and e either it can go through the switch sometimes and not clear it. That doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. What happens more often is that the ball will hit the goal and not clear, or it will clear the switch without going through, um, which is really uh, unfortunate because uh, it, as the current rules are written, that is a disqualification because you uh, you match effectively score points. Um, illegally. So yeah, uh, that's 
I hope they're going to change that soon because that happens all the time in, in when I've been practicing and stuff like that, um, messing around with the field. Um, next, uh, we have a bit of a discrepancy in the rules uh, where um, it says uh, in G5 it says 24 inches wide and uh, in the video and, and, and different rules it says 23 inches wide. The actual thing is 23 inches wide, so just, you know, don't be confused by that. Um, and yeah, this is a, another one about the switches. Um, uh, going, like, switching when, like, either, uh, uh, when, when the ball goes through and they don't get clear, the, the, the ball hits the goal and it's clear to switch without going through. Um, yeah. So, it's important to keep up on the Q&As because they, uh, have update, rule updates before the next revision of the game manual comes out, and it will sometimes include them, sometimes won't. Um, I did appreciate last year how they, uh, put the relevant Q&As next to the rules in the game manual. That was really useful to know the details about the rule. But yeah, that uh, is the essential rules you need to know for this year's Vex IQ game. Of course, go read the game manual all the way through because that's the only way to know all of the rules. Um, but yeah, um, good luck in uh, Rapid Relay, and I look forward to seeing you at the competitions.